I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Hi, I'm Luke Ryan for JoeBlow.com and this is From Page to Screen. For this installment, we'll be looking back at the character of Wolverine as portrayed by Hugh Jackman in the 20th Century Fox X-Men movie franchise. The character was created by writer Len Wein and designed by Marvel art director John Romita Sr. Wolverine first appeared in the last panel of The Incredible Hulk issue 180, making his first full appearance in issue 181 in November 1974. Wolverine was a mysterious character whose origin wasn't explained immediately, a former soldier with superhuman abilities suffering from amnesia who was searching the Canadian mountains to uncover more about his own past. His abilities include a heightened sense of smell and hearing and a highly accelerated form of healing that can see him recovering from gunshot wounds in seconds. His true origin was delved into decades after his initial introduction into the world of Marvel, and like most comic book character backstories, there's never really a definitive one, but one constant is that he was captured by the government, and after being experimented on, his skeleton was covered with an almost indestructible metal alloy named adamantium, with razor-sharp claws that he could retract through his hands. The character quickly became a staple of the X-Men series, and due to his gruff nature and animalistic brute force, he became an anti-hero fan favourite, and a wolf Wolverine's solo comic began in 1988, after a successful four-issue limited series in 1982 titled Wolverine, written by Chris Claremont and drawn by Frank Miller. The character was also a staple of the many Marvel animated shows, making his first appearance in Spider-Man and his amazing friends in 1981. This is our other new member, Wolverine. Are you doll? Want a piece of fruit? Most notably, he was a main part of the 1990s X-Men series as well, and over the years has appeared in virtually every form of crossover media, from films to TV shows and video games. In 2000, 20th Century Fox were gearing up for a live-action X-Men film, and many people were considered for the part of Wolverine, and the director Brian Singer spoke to Russell Crowe, Edward Norton, and Keanu Reeves about the part. Dugray Scott was even cast as Wolverine, as he shared somewhat of a resemblance to the short and stocky character, but had to withdraw due to scheduling conflicts on Mission Impossible 2. So the largely unknown at the time, Australian actor Hugh Jackman was cast late in the game, and the rest was history. Initially, there was criticism from fans as the six foot three inches tall Hugh Jackman didn't match the short and bulky frame of Wolverine, but his portrayal of the character was soon met with praise, and he's gone on to define the role over 17 years with nine appearances in feature films. In X-Men, the essence of Wolverine was captured very well, with Logan taking Rogue under his wing. Despite his tendency to break out into berserker rages and toe the line between savage killer and comic book hero, Wolverine often took younger mutants under his wing, such as Jubilee and Shadowcat, aka Kitty Pride. Jackman brought the loner, tough guy feeling to Logan perfectly and carried over the popularity of the character from the page to the screen, while embodying the signature humour of Wolverine very faithfully too. In 2003, X-Men 2 was released, and Wolverine's backstory was touched upon more with the introduction of William Stryker, a character who first appeared in the 1982 graphic novel X-Men God Loves, Man Kills, where he is introduced as a religious extremist who seeks to wipe out mutant kind, with a brutal backstory of killing his family after his son is born as a deformed mutant. In X-Men 2, Stryker is no longer a minister, but a military scientist. In the comics, he did have a military background, but the film changed a few details, though his villainous collaboration with Magneto and the manipulation of Professor X are in keeping with the comic. The film also introduced the fact that Stryker was the one who had experimented on Logan, giving him his adamantium claws and skeleton, whereas in the comic books, the two characters had never met. X-Men 3 The Last Stand was released in 2006 and took a lot of cues from the arc known as the Dark Phoenix Saga revolving around Jean Grey that kicked off with issue 101 of Uncanny X-Men in 1977. The culmination of that story saw Jean Grey sacrificing herself to save everyone, whereas in X-Men 3, Wolverine has to kill her himself. Given their relationship over the initial three films, it made more sense, but the handling of the Dark Phoenix Saga source material from the ending of X2 to the entirety of The Last Stand came under a lot of criticism from fans for not being truer to the source material. In 2009, we saw the first standalone Wolverine movie in X-Men Origins 
Wolverine, which was meant to be the first of a series of Origins movies that never ended up happening. Logan's backstory was told in the six-issue limited series called Origin, starting in November 2001, the feeling being that the film series would eventually get to his beginnings if they didn't do the comic book version first. And while the movie ended up taking a lot of elements from that limited comic book series, they also changed a lot, most notably the relationship between Wolverine and Sabretooth, who in the film are brothers, which wasn't a part of the comic book canon. They are also seen fighting together in the Civil War in the opening credits of the film, and in the comics, Wolverine wasn't born until the late 1800s. Jackman's next appearance as Wolverine was an unexpected one, as he popped up in the 2011 prequel film X-Men First Class, focusing on a young Professor X, Magneto and Mystique, in a brief yet memorable cameo. Excuse me, I'm Eric Lentra. Charles Xavier. Go fuck yourself. In 2013, a second Wolverine movie was released, simply titled The Wolverine, directed by James Mangold. It drew on the character's connection with Japan in the comics, being set almost entirely in the land of the rising sun. The original 1982 Wolverine run is followed extremely closely in The Wolverine, from Logan's wanderings in the Canadian wilderness, to his adventures in Japan, even with key moments replicated almost frame by frame. So while a lot of the details weren't exact, there was still a lot of faithful attention paid to the historic first solo story story of the character. Just a year later in 2014, Wolverine played a huge part in the second X-Men prequel film, Days of Future Past, based on the hugely popular arc in the X-Men mythos that started in issue 141 of Uncanny X-Men in 1981. Again, key details were paid homage to in the film, but largely, Wolverine's involvement was different, as it was Kitty Pride who actually transfers her mind back in time to save the day in the comic, not Wolverine. In 2016, the prequel series continued with X-Men Apocalypse, and Wolverine turned up in a quick cameo in his Weapon X form, which was detailed in an arc that started in Marvel Comics Presents issue 72 in 1991. The film showed us Wolverine at his most primal and ruthless, an unstoppable killing machine, wearing a very similar helmet to the one he wore in the 1991 story arc. After eight appearances as Wolverine on the big screen, Hugh Jackman announced that he would be retiring from the role that made him a star with one final solo movie simply titled Logan. Apparently at one point Jackman had told his wife that he'd been so inspired by the film Birdman that he had to find a way to keep playing Wolverine until he died. But in 2015 at San Diego Comic Con he confirmed to the world that the third Wolverine movie would be his last with this little hint. Moving for, I've got three words for you guys. Old Man Logan. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Old Man Logan was an eight-issue run that started in issue 66 of Wolverine in June 2008. Set in a future without heroes, an older, wearier, and battle-worn Logan teams up with a now-blind Hawkeye in what writer Mark Miller describes as a road movie. From what we've seen of Logan, least of all the images of Jackman looking like a much older version of Wolverine than we've seen on screen, seems to place Professor X in the role of Wolverine's old companion. Given that Fox were unable to use most Marvel characters, including Hawkeye, Mark Miller doesn't seem to think this will hurt the movie, and the much talked about potential inclusion of the character X-23 in Logan has sparked a lot of discussion and fan interest also. It remains to be seen how Logan will close out Hugh Jackman's cinematic story as Wolverine, and whether or not we see the role recast down the line is likely a matter of when, not if. Jackman seems at peace with this, saying, I'd be happy if the role was eventually recast, it would mean that it had become iconic. While fans were initially hesitant of the casting of Hugh Jackman, he's gone on to embody the character of Wolverine wonderfully, and has been very vocal in staying as true to the comic book roots as much as possible. One element we never did see was the signature yellow costume, which was teased for the Wolverine before being cut, but was later shown in this deleted scene. What's this? Open it. Regardless of the yellow suit, the movie iteration of Wolverine always seemed to hit a healthy balance between staying true to the source material and doing its own thing. It'll be a shame to see the end of Jackman's run, but it's been a hell of a ride, and Logan seems to be a fitting end. I hurt myself today to see if I still feel I focus on the pain 
the only thing that's real. 